Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video that quite a few people have asked for. This is a Zorg ZF-1. This is actually the body of a He-Wing T2 cruiser. This is a plane that I'm currently doing an RD plane build in. Last time I did one was back in 2020. This one is a modern version using a modern electronics, so specifically things like a Cube Pilot Orange Plus, a Hair 4 GPS, and all of the latest bits and pieces. The idea is, is that if you follow along this series, it will kind of go together. Uh, interestingly, 95% of the steps are exactly the same as they were back in 2020, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a reference platform that I could then plug things into and play with when people ask me questions about Yapu telemetry or Express LRS setup or those kind of different bits and pieces. Now, as you've probably spotted, what is in here already is the INAV configuration as it was left when I built this back in December 2023. This is a SpeedyB F405 wing flight controller with a GPS at the back and an old school FreeSky S bus receiver with smart port telemetry. This has basically not been flown since I built it because quite frankly, I like the smaller models and the T1 flies just as beautifully as this and is much easier to transport. However, there's room in here to put a modern Pixel flight controller in and do the series. But I know lots of you follow along from things like these series and lament at the fact that I'm using the gold standard, no pun intended with it being orange, of flight controller for an Ardu pilot or Ardu plane build. Things like the Speedy Wing flight controller, if I can say it, is about sub $40, 40 pounds. So it's a very cheap and cheerful way to get into Ardu pilot. And in this video, it's also an opportunity for me to show you how when you have iNav on a flight controller, like this that is supported by Ardu Pilot, how easy it is to flash it and then get on with the configuration. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to flash this iNav flight controller with Ardu Pilot. I'm not gonna go through the full setup because that's what the rest of the series is for. I'll put a link down below. In terms of the setup, it's exactly the same. You're gonna calibrate the accelerometer, you're gonna calibrate the compass, you're gonna make sure that things like the modes are set up correctly, you're gonna calibrate the radio, set up your modes. The setup is identical, even if you're not using something like an Ardu Pilot Cube. Do you sacrifice anything by not using one of those more expensive, more capable flight controllers? Yeah, you do, but you know what? 95% of hobby grade flyers are never gonna bump into anything that's going to be a specific issue. Modern RD Pilot flight controllers like the Cube Orange are H7 based. They have internal heaters, redundant IMUs, they have more memory. So because of that, they are kind of the gold standard reference platform, which is why I'm using one here. But if you're using something like this, this will still run the vast majority of Ardu Pilot and it will work great, allowing you, if you want to play with some of Ardu Pilot's more advanced features over stuff like iNav and other flight controller technology, you can stick it on here and have a go. Flashing it back is very easy. You just plug it in, select the iNav target and flash it as you normally would. So enough of me banging on, let's get onto the bench and let me go through the process. So as I mentioned in the introduction, here is how it is currently configured. Set up with iNav, we have a GPS here at the back. It's using an S-Bus receiver, pretty old school for this particular setup. And then we have all of the pieces plugged in here. This is a pretty standard configuration, wired as it appears in the documentation. And if I jump over to the computer very quickly, this is how it is all plumbed together. The GPS is plugged in here which you can just about make out. And all of the wires that are in here are connected as shown. So it's pretty easy and straightforward. The only thing I would say be careful of here is in this documentation, it's looking from the bottom of the flight controller. You can mount it either way up. I happen to like it mounted this particular way. So just be aware of that. But everything is set up as it is shown here on the screen. Again, the default UR order of how everything's going to be mapped is here in the documentation. So if we're going to want to mess with uh, UR1, which is where the CRSF stuff uh, or Express LRS is going to be put in here, then we're going to play with Serial 1 to configure all that stuff. Serial and motor outputs, everything is documented in here. Again, once we have this flashed, the rest of the setup is pretty much going to go along exactly the same way as something like a Cube Pilot Orange. 
Now, the thing we need to do here is zoom down to the very bottom of the screen. Uh, just be aware, uh, I'd always read through all this stuff before you play with this gear. Everything is set by defaults when the firmware is loaded, except a battery amp per volt. So I would come in and make sure that that's set once it's flashed. That's literally the only thing that's really different. Now, there is information here about loading boards without the um, RD Pilot firmware. We're going to go and look for the SpeedyB F405 wing stuff in the latest pieces. Now, we need to download this so that we can flash it using the AirNav configurator just like a normal hex file. So we're going to load plane. That's the version that we want. As I'm recording this, the stable version, you've got all these different versions. You can go for the latest, you can go for betas. I would just go for the latest stable version. You have all these different things here. We're going to keep going down until we finally get to SpeedyB F405 wing. There it is, wing. That's what we want. So if I just confirm, if we go back, it is SpeedyB F405 wing. Fantastic. Let me just zoom forward again. SpeedyB F405 wing. There it is. And in here, we have all these different ones. And that is the one we want. Ardu plane with BL hex. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to click on that. And it's going to be downloaded. We shall stick that onto the desktop. And we're going to use that file in a moment to flash everything. Now, the trick is what we need to do is start iNav or Betaflight Configurator. And once we have it running, we're going to flash this flight controller with it because that hex file can be just treated and uploaded like any firmware. So we're going to plug it in. We're going to wait for it to boot. It'll appear here on the computer as the COM port of whichever one is on. This is almost exactly like flashing iNav as you would normally. So if you've already played with these kind of boards with iNav, this is going to work beautifully. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into firmware flasher. It's picked up that it's a SpeedyBF 405 wing because it is already running iNav on here because that's how we set it up originally. So rather than go through all this stuff here, what we're going to do is go down here to the bottom right hand corner, click on load firmware local, and we're going to click on that file that we've just downloaded. And then we're going to click on flash firmware. And now it's going to erase everything. And this is just flashing it with that hex file. Don't unplug everything, just leave it to go through the whole process. Once we've got it flashed, then we can jump into Mission Planner and continue the setup as we would do with anything else. And here we go, we're starting to flash. And while it's flashing, let me just briefly again talk about the fact that if you have already got this set up with iNav and you've been flying and you're doing what I'm here, which is kind of updating it or changing it to Ardu Pilot, what I would recommend doing is taking a dump and a diffall, saving that somewhere on the computer, also having a look at how the ports are configured, and also taking a look at what the middle trim positions of all the control services are, because that's a pretty good place to start when you're playing with the Ardu Pilot configuration, which we will do in the next couple of videos. So this is going to take a little bit longer. Just let it work its way through. Let me skip to the end of this, because you can see here we're about 40% of the way through. Skip to the end. And here it is verifying and the programming is successful. So now this board is flashed with Ardu Pilot. So we no longer want iNav stuff. We can close that out. I personally would reboot the board. It's not sure, particularly sure you need to do that. I just like to make sure that it's going to boot cleanly into Ardu Pilot for the first time. So we'll plug it in. And on the computer, we'll start Mission Planner. And hopefully when we click Connect, we're going to be able to talk to the flight controller and it's all going to be working beautifully. So we have COM13. Um, you see here it's, called, it's COM16 Ardu Pilot. Let's click on there, click on Connect. And hopefully it's going to connect, which it has. And then we're going to have to go through all the configuration. Now, the cool thing is here is that already on the screen, there is a 3D fix being shown. So the GPS is working. We would have to go through all the standard configuration stuff from here on in. So it, what we would do 
is we'd go into the setup tab just like we would with any other configuration and this is what we're going to do further in the series go down to mandatory hardware do the accelerometer calibration because it's not looking flat we'd have to do that that isn't something that's come across then we do the compass calibration then we do the radio calibration. By default, the S bus input is being selected. However, if I was going to be setting it up with Express LRS, I'd plug it into these four pins here, which is TX1, RX1, uh, four and a half volts and ground, and then follow along with this video here, which explains how you set up serial one on this board for something like Express LRS. But once we've done that, then I go and have a look at things like the servo outputs. And here we can see that by default, we have the four default outputs. We can move these around. We can assign different things here. Again, I could be tempted to change the middle trim positions to the ones that were set by INAV in the flight as it was trimming it when it was flying around and then potentially finish off the standard setup. So that is how you configure and flash something like a SpeedyV F405. The flashing is a little bit different. Once you've done the flashing, however, everything else in terms of all the setup steps is exactly the same. You make sure that all the controls are plugged into the right outputs so that they match these outputs that are on here. I potentially would move these around, potentially match what is on here. Be aware, don't forget that those are those kind of timer mappings and things. So now it's running, I would just carry on with all of the other setup steps. So there we have it, this flight controller, the Speedy F405 wing is now running Ardu plane and I would continue to set it up as I've just kind of described in the video series. Loads of videos on my channel about how to set up Express LRS, how to set up HDFPV and all those other pieces, just because it's running on this thing here rather than something like a Holy Bro 6C or 6C Mini or something like an orange cube, uh, doesn't mean you can't do all of that fab stuff. So if you're interested in the rest of the series, there is a link down below. Thanks for watching and hopefully for all of you that asked me, please show how you flash a Speedy BF 405 wing. You've now seen it. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.